SpaceX has told its employees it's entering a regulatory quiet period, moving the rocket and satellite maker a step closer to an IPO that could be slated for 2026. This is according to a report from Bloomberg. For more on what a potential SpaceX IPO means for other space companies looking to go public, as well as just the general landscape for next year, I'm joined here on set by Chad Anderson, Space Capital founder and CEO. He's also the author of The Space Economy. Good to see you. Yeah, great to be here. So I'm so curious about SpaceX and kind of like whether it sucks the air out of the room for other types of space investment or creates more of a halo effect for space investment? I think it's definitely the latter. Um, This is really exciting news. It's still uncertain, but we'll see what happens. But if they do, I mean, this is, I think this is going to set a new benchmark. It's going to reprice a lot of assets throughout the category. I think it's going to show what can be done. And I think it's going to kick off a wave of new listings. So this could be really exciting. And then from our perspective as private market investors in early companies, uh, we're really excited to see what happens when these founders get some liquidity who own stock yeah. options and shares. And they go on now and they're freed from the shackles of working at um, big companies. They can go and you know um, think about what they want to do, start their own thing. So we expect that this is going to... Yeah, um, uh, increase the SpaceX mafia. I mean, a few years ago, it was, you know, we were tracking 45 companies or something like that of SpaceX alumni that had gone on and done, founded new companies. It's now up to, I don't know, closer to 200. And we'll see what happens with, with this um, uh, liquidity event. But for us, I mean, this is, um, uh, uh, SpaceX is the apex player. They're 10 years ahead of anybody else. They've been setting the benchmark all along. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now this sort of moment, um, we'll see what happens, but it could really catalyze a lot of activity. I mean, on the flip side, if they are so far ahead of everyone else and then their numbers are public, does that then um, mean that some of the other players, particularly in the public markets, who also their numbers are public, like that, that they're disadvantaged if they're not in the same place as SpaceX is. Hmm. Well, that's um, that's a really interesting point. So I think SpaceX has stayed private for so long, and they've been so in demand. Um, uh, this is the hottest stock in the private markets. Right. Everyone is vying to get access to SpaceX. Um, and I think it's really sort of difficult um, when you've got that much interest and that many investors um, to sort of keep things quiet. So, you know, you see throughout the, the, the news that there's a lot of information that's out there right. on what their performance looks like, right? So um, it's no... Um, so that sort of cat's out of the bag So it already. wouldn't necessarily change the dynamic. Yeah, I think so. And so you see, like, um, what are the numbers, you know, um, uh, 13 last year, 15 this year. You start to think, like, the, the growth is not parabolic um, in uh, uh, their, their growth is not parabolic. They, but they are cash flow positive, and they have been buying back shares, right? So I think what um, this would do is really give them sort of a, a large cash infusion to go after some of their long-term missions to Mm -hmm. get to Mars, to um, uh, build data centers in orbit, uh, to fund that and really have a big cash infusion to basically speed things up and go faster. Um, And one of those is also what Starship is one of the projects that they're working on. Um, So how important is that? And what's the timeline for something like that? Super important. So Starship is a next generation massive vehicle. Um, we've never had anything of this size. So if 2025 was the year of launch frequency, we were basically, we started launching, we launched almost every day, one launch per day, mm-hmm. right? And that launch cadence is increasing. 2026 is going to be about mass. Um, Starship is a massive vehicle. It is going to be fully reusable, which means that both the first stage of the rocket and the second stage both can land and be refueled and stacked and launched again, more like operational commercial airlines, Mm. which is really exciting because that is going to, um, it promises to deliver another step change in order of magnitude, further reduction in launch costs, which really um, will do a lot to, again, to the halo effect, you know, comment to really Mm. stimulate growth in, in this category. Um, but at the same time, that vehicle is is necessary to launch these next generation Starlink satellites, the V3 satellites that they already um, that they have already designed, and they're just waiting for a vehicle that can carry them. Their data centers in orbit that they're now talking about mm-hmm. w- in conjunction with this um, potential IPO uh, requires Starship to be able to launch these things, right? So this um, is 
uh, a linchpin. It's cri- it's critical to their strategy, and it's also um, critical um, to to take the space economy to the next level. Um, another thing that you're watching closely going into next year is what geo intelligence and defense. Yeah. Those are kind of some themes within space. So, what should we be watching for there? Yeah, kind of just thinking about the convergence of AI and space mm-hmm. in totality, right? So, we talked a little bit about orbital data centers. Everyone seems to be talking about that now. Yeah. Um, Starship is and and Blue Origin's next generation vehicles too are going to allow us to launch new infrastructure that you know we couldn't do before like orbital data centers and some other things so that's really interesting on the ai front and also um with regards to you know geospatial intelligence so um if gps is the dot on the map geospatial intelligence is the map this is um uh, digital information layered on top of the physical world a lot of that comes from the global intelligence comes from satellites um, and different sensor types that are feeding into this really robust, rich data set about what's going on on the surface of our planet. Mm-hmm. That's too much data for humans to comb through. So um, uh, AI has come along at just the right time to basically help us parse through that and make sense of that, drive useful insights from that. And this is a huge area of growth. We're seeing um, well, what we call world models. So everyone's familiar with LLMs and what's going on there, but those aren't really good at helping us to understand and navigate the physical world. Mm. So there's a lot of work going on right now um, in geospatial embeddings, basically embedding the data to have the right geospatial information, coordinates, positioning data, r- rich layers of, of data to basically help you now use AI to make sense of the physical world, right? Not just language. Right. So this is a huge area of opportunity. Um, a lot of demand is being driven by defense and intelligence communities, but then also there's massive consumer and enterprise applications as well. Very cool. All right, Chad, we got to leave it there. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.